So you want to be a Division I college coach? Well, you're in luck, my friends, because Coach Javi's about to break it down. Let's roll the intro. How's it going guys, Coach Javi here. And one of the questions I get asked frequently is what I did to get where I am today in terms of division one coaching and what advice I would give to other people who are maybe starting out in their coaching career or want to move up the coaching ladder. So this video isn't only for people who want to coach in division one, but it's just for anyone who's looking to move up in the coaching world, get to whatever position they want to go to. Whether that means you want to coach club at a high level, you want to coach at a good high school, or you do want to end up coaching in division one. So the fourth official has indicated an additional two minutes. Let's put the clock on the board and get started. All right, guys. So I want to start off this video by just telling you kind of what I did to become a division one college coach, what my pathway was, and then give you guys a little bit of advice so that you guys can maybe move up in the coaching world. So as many of you guys know, I played in college at Ashford University, which was a small NAIA school. So my sophomore year, while I was playing at the college, I decided to take up an assistant coaching position at a local high school. At the time, I didn't really think that coaching was gonna be what I wanted to do after playing. So I just did it as more of a way to get a little bit of extra spending money and get paid for something that I love to do, which is basically go and be out on a soccer field all day playing soccer. So as I started to like coaching a little bit more and as I really got into it, um, I started picking up a few extra teams. So I picked up maybe two or three different club teams. I started doing a lot of camps and clinics. I started volunteering, doing as much related to coaching as I possibly could, just because I wanted the experience but also because I knew it would be something that I could put on the resume. So when I graduated, if coaching was my first choice, I could have a pretty good resume coming straight out of college. So most of it was just volunteer work or getting paid very, very little. Eventually it got to the point where my passion to coach outgrew my passion to play. And so I was very happy with the decision to like fully retire from competitive soccer in order to go and coach full time. So you guys already know Ali Al Ghashami. If you guys have watched my videos, you guys have seen him in loads of the vlogs loads of the videos. I actually met Ali while I was playing in Detroit at Detroit City FC. We were actually teammates so he didn't know how good of a coach I was. He didn't know I was into coaching as much as I was but that's where I met him and when I told him that I was looking for a position he knew there was an opening at the school where he played which was Gardner Webb and that's basically how I ended up at Gardner Webb coaching division one soccer. On top of coaching the women's team you guys know that I'm also doing the men's reserve team and I'm also doing my Cobra girls who are my U15 club that I coach. Um, in town as well. So basically in a summarized version, that's how I got to where I am today, which will lead me into the pieces of advice that I'm about to give you right now. The first piece of advice I have for you guys is go out and get as much coaching experience as you possibly can. I know a lot of people want to coach at the highest levels, but you have to start wherever there's an opportunity. I've coached everywhere from U9 all the way up until the college level, both boys and girls. Not only is this good to put on the resume because it gives you a lot of information, a lot of things to bulk up your resume with, but it also helps you in your coaching development. My U15 girls, I have to coach differently than I coach my college girls. And my college girls, I have to coach very differently than I coach my men's reserve team, right? So it's given me a good perspective on coaching at different levels and in different ways so that I can be successful, basically. I would recommend reaching out to a local college and seeing if you can volunteer with the team. That's gonna give you some good experience to put on your resume right away. Take any club teams you can get. Don't do it for the money, but just do it to get as much experience as possible. Eventually, you're gonna be able to get paid more. You're gonna be able to charge whatever you feel you're worth. But at the beginning, you kind of have to swallow your pride a little bit and do a lot of it as volunteer work and for very little pay. The next thing is go and get your coaching licenses as soon as you possibly can. Coaching licenses, I know it's just a piece of paper, but it's a great experience. You get to network with a lot of coaches, which will lead into my next point. A lot of jobs these days are asking for a preferred USSF coaching license. So the USSF is the United States Soccer Federation. They're the ones that offer the coaching licenses. You can go on their website, you can look at the schedule of all the courses, and you can go ahead and sign up. Personally, I think it's very overpriced. I think it's extremely expensive, but I think it's absolutely necessary if you want to start coaching at the higher levels. A lot of clubs now, if you want to be the director of coaching or the DOC, they ask that you have a certain license, which is either the B or the A or one of those higher licenses. So it's not saying that you can't get a job 
if you don't have a good coaching license, but it definitely, definitely makes the resume look a lot better. And this is this is where Coach Javi is about to drop the truth on you right now. I know I joke around about, you know, the truth. Here, this is the truth. That's the truth. This right here is the real truth. I'm not kidding. And I know it might sound bad. It might sound good. It might You might not care. But coaching is all about connections. It's all about who you know, who can get you into the position that you want. I am the perfect example of connections basically getting me where I am today. Not saying that I'm not a good coach, but I played for Detroit City. That's where I met Ali Al Gashami. Ali didn't know me as Coach Javi. He knew me as his teammate and his roommate. We played together. We didn't coach together. He hadn't seen me coach. He didn't know how good of a coach I was. He referred me for the position because he liked me as a person. From what he says, it was one or two conversations that we were talking about soccer that he realized that I was a good coach. I could have been I could have been the worst coach in the history of coaching and I would have probably gotten the position that I have right now. So whether that's bad, that's good, whether I deserve it or whether I don't deserve it, in the end, I'll be honest with you guys, it's all about connections. If I hadn't known Ali, I wouldn't be coaching Division One right now. Um, and you'll see that there's a lot of coaches who are definitely qualified but are in lower positions. And there's also coaches who are in very good positions who personally I don't think are qualified to be there. The coaching world, whether people want you to hear it or not, is all about networking and connections. You'll come to find that it's a very, very small world. So one coach that you know over here probably knows another coach that you might not know of over there. And then that coach knows that coach and that coach and these guys all know each other. So when you're talking to one coach, and you're applying for a position, they might help you get that next position. And this goes back to the licensing as well. The C license that I just took this past summer had about 20 coaches. So because of that course, I now have 20 more coaches that I can reach out to, whether it's to find a job or whether it's for them to work a clinic, whatever. And on top of that, those 20 connections that I made there will branch out to all the connections that they have in case they need to refer me for a position or ask them to refer me for a position. So again, I cannot stress that enough it's all about connections. Don't be shy. Go ahead and meet as many coaches as you can. Go ahead and network. Whether it's a good thing, whether it's a bad thing, that's just the way it is. So just to recap really quickly, go ahead and get as much experience as you possibly can. Go ahead and get your coaching licenses done and make as many connections as you possibly can. So again, this is just my perspective. This is just based off of my experiences. These are some of the things that I found to be the most valuable in terms of trying to move up that coaching ladder. But that's about it, guys. Until next time, and adios, muchachos.